Welcome to the Mavens Do It Better podcast. And now, your host, Heather Newman. Hello, everyone. Here we are again for another episode of the Mavens Do It Better podcast, where we interview extraordinary experts who bring a light to the world, where we talk to them about technology and brand and origin stories. And today, I am so excited to have Shauna Bang on, a good friend and colleague from Microsoft. Say hello to the listeners. Yay! Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me, Heather. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, She is a product marketing manager at Microsoft, and she and I did some work together uh, over the last couple of years working on diversity and inclusion, diversity in tech at Microsoft, and she has got a brand new uh, launching piece in our community that I wanted to talk to her about, and also Microsoft Ignite that's coming up. So um, why don't we just launch into humans in IT and tell us about that? So we call it humans of IT. Of IT. Like model after humans of New York, if you're familiar with yes. the theory. Perfect. So it's very much about storytelling, right? Helping people really unlock their tech superpowers, as they call it, to do good in this world. So <laughs> as you know, we love the diversity in tech things that we've been doing over the past couple of years. But I think now just the right moment for us to up-level this to a whole new level and talk about how do we use technology for humanity and how do we use this for good to solve some of the world's biggest problems, whether it's helping people, um, you know, in underrepresented situations, or, you know, um, refugees is another big one that we try to look, um, look into. Um, so, you know, it's really how do we use technology to really solve world problems is our key goal with this. That's awesome. And where can everybody find that? So we have a brand new community page, aka.ms slash humans of IT. So check that out. And I think Heather, you can provide a link on yes, there. You, bet. Um, you know, it's an all new page. We are trying to get new stories. So if anyone is interested in having your story featured, we actually have a call for content now that you could apply to be a guest blogger. Just go to aka.ms slash guest bloggers and we'll get in touch. That's awesome. That was so exciting to see. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the community mentors program, which started like last year, right? Mm-hmm. As well. Yep. It started, you know, it's been a journey with the community mentors program. When we first started, we literally had an Excel sheet that we matched everybody <laughs> manually. Wow. And, you know, it was going good until we got 1,500 applications and we were like, okay, we need to scale like, and scale big. Wow. So that's why we partnered with a local Seattle startup called Tribute to build an all new app. That's running on Azure, by the way. Oh, uh, nice. We're trying to build Power BI in the back end for an analytics portion. But really, the app is meant to you know, empower people to find their own mentors wherever they are at any stage of your life. And you can have up to five mentors at each time. So whether you're trying to pick up skills on public speaking or technical areas, that's absolutely where you would go to connect with people. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's the cool thing is that I, I actually just got a mentor at a podcasting conference. And mm-hmm. I it's been a long time since I've had a mentor, I will say and I was so happy. And she came she was she's a uh, from the LA Times and amazing. You know, it was just so great. Sometimes that outside in you don't always see things, you know, and to have someone look at your stuff. She was looking at my podcast and gave me some great feedback. And I was just like, Oh, this is amazing. You know, and so I, mm-hmm. I'm on tribute. I went and I was like, I'm, I want a mentor and I want to, you know, have mentees and be a mentor and all of that stuff. So y'all, you have to check this out. Um, the tribute app and we'll put it in the show notes as well. It's a really, yeah. really cool program. I That's... think the best thing is mentors can come from anywhere, right? Like yeah. Sometimes the most unexpected places. And what we really try to do with our mentorship app is storytelling based. So it gets really personal when you can yeah. read people's life stories. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, it's not just check a bunch of skills and stuff like that, right? It does go deeper. And I think that's, life experiences. Yeah, which is really cool about that app. That's awesome that it's a local Seattle company. That's super cool. I love that. And totally free. That's the <laughs> other thing. <laughs> <laughs> AK.ms slash community mentors is how you would join. And yeah, you would have to be a member of the Humans of IT community to get on there. But it's a great place to connect with thousands of people, literally yeah. at your fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. And those of you who are you know, aren't necessarily a part of the tech community yet. It's super easy. Um, It's Microsoft tech community and you go and you sign in and then you can, you know, be a part of humans uh, of IT. And then also you can, you know, look at 
you know, SharePoint and events and training. There's so much there, you know, so that's a giant, beautiful website that's got so much to offer for everybody. You know, um, it's at anybody and everybody who's working in and around Microsoft products and has an interest. And so lots of really cool things, conversations, blogs, mentorship, all that stuff. So that's awesome. So I want to know, um, I, you, you and I are both uh, Huskies. We went to UW. So mm-hmm. back in the day. I went to Freely just for a certificate program. <laughs> but yes, I would call myself that. <laughs> I, went a little, I, I went a little bit further back than you did. But, but you also, um, I'm from Chicago uh, the nor- uh, Midwest originally. And so you also, you went to Northwestern and you went to Yale. Talk about that. You've got awesome degrees. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're not degrees. They're more like certification yeah. programs. So okay. Cool. Rewind like years and years back. So yeah. I'm originally from Singapore. Yeah. Okay. Um, I spent about over five years working at Microsoft Singapore before I finally transferred over to the U.S. Gotcha. So it's been about three and a half years here now. Mm. Um, and when I got here, I really wanted to learn you know, on a global level, like tap into these amazing academic institutions that help have all these programs. So yeah. I did like a strategic comms course with UW. Um, I did um, a diversity inclusion certificate with Yale. Wow. So that was interesting. It was yeah. fully online and you would connect with people working on DNI stuff all around the world. Hmm. Um, they break into groups, so it's super interactive. I think they still offer that program if anyone is interested. Wow. Um, feel free to check that out. But yeah, I think. You know, like I'm all about getting new experiences and continually learning from people. So that's something that I've always been passionate about. And that's kind of how I got into those. Yeah, that's super cool. I've been to Singapore once. I loved it. It's so beautiful and clean. I just... have you tried our food? I mean, Uh, our food is the best. Yeah, I have. Yes. uh, What is it? The chili crab. Chili crab, chicken rice, like Uh, all of that. I think, you know, Crazy Rich Asians movie definitely (laughs) spotlighted Singapore quite a bit. But you got to go there to experience it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, I actually went to um, TJ from Avpoint. I went to his wedding and uh, yeah, there. And so that was really a special occasion to be there and they got married on the island and it was just uh yeah fantastic so yeah it's a and i i can't wait to go back it's a good it's a great place we have microsoft ignite the tour in singapore oh. happening uh february Oof. so that's hmm. definitely one of all stops hmm. if you're interested to check it out yeah absolutely do you get back much um not really maybe once a year just yeah. to see family or go on the ignite tours yeah right <laughs> right mean, or, you know, it's very consuming, as you can tell, 30 cities that we're going to cover this year, but, you know, very exciting. Wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, so we tell everybody a little bit about what your charter is, about what you do? Uh, like right now? Yeah, yeah, your job, <laughs> yeah. Um, so right now I lead the Humans of IT community. It's brand new. Humans of IT is really focusing on tech for good and tech for humanity. So we're all about spotlighting stories, people, um, you know, examples of how you're using technology to solve world problems. Um, it's kind of a role that kind of we carved it ourselves. You know, it's not something you find in the JD. It's literally <laughs> something that came about because we see that there is a great need for it. And Microsoft is a huge proponent of that. Um, a lot of examples are in the media recently, as you know, Brad Smith published um, a book called Tools and Weapons. Yep. Um, it's really all about how do we help people around the world get access to technology because technology is a huge leveler, right? In terms of giving people access and opportunities. Yep. Um, and that's something we want to showcase. We want to showcase whatever people are doing in their home countries whether it's in France or in Tel Aviv or Mumbai you know there's huge opportunity and I think you know giving them the space to share that is really important yeah absolutely and so talk about um Donna Sakar and Annie Parker I know I saw that when you were um announcing this that uh you mentioned both of them with a thank you how were they involved with the with the the movement yeah, that's a funny backstory to it. So, as you know, like they've always been huge supporters of our DMT work yep. that we've been doing around DNI. So, when we were, you know, re pivoting to this new track, they were the first to sign up to be like, I want to be on this. <laughs> and Donna has been a huge supporter. Like, literally, even in the early weeks before we got to creating this new thing, like I met up with her and we talked about the concept and whether this would land with both our IT Pro and Dev audiences. And she was 100% on board. Um, and she dragged Annie Parker in. <laughs> kind of fallen her. Uh-huh. And the next day I get an email saying, Oh yes, Annie Parker is also an exec sponsor. Can you just put her in? Um and Annie does great work with the, the Microsoft startups yeah. um portion of things over she's based in Australia but she really does global startup work. Yep. And you know, we, we see a lot of opportunities in terms of what the startup space is doing. Um our community mentors program as mentioned is 
founded by a Seattle startup. You know, it's women-led startup too. So, you know, we really want to bring all these stories to light and giving them that safe space to share that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so that's so great. What, what, where did you sort of get started with the DNI? I know you, you know, your certificate and all of that stuff. Did, was that something that was, you know what I mean? I mean, I know it's like, okay, yeah. it's a sort of silly question, but, um, no, it's not. This is actually a funny story how I got into okay. it. So I have no like professional DNI bag or anything. Like mm-hmm. I don't have a organizational behavior cert or whatnot. Right. My background was actually in crisis PR. Okay. So I spent, well, so before that, I was managing technical crisis back in Singapore when I was a technical account manager, moved to the U.S. because nobody wanted this job that was focused on crisis PR management. Wow. Um, I did that, and I've seen, you know, everything from humanitarian issues to cybersecurity cases, like, all, you name it, like, we've probably dealt with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and one day, you met Anna Chu, my coworker, yeah, who runs community. She came over, and she said... Hey, you know, we have this role called women in tech marketing. Would you be interested? I was like, women in tech? Like, no, I can't just do women in tech. It's got to be all of it. You know, we're not just one dimensional. Yep. We are all of the different identities that make us who we are. So I went to our hiring manager at the time to say, hey, I'm interested in this, but I want to do it holistically. So let's talk about the intersection of diversity and technology. Right. And that's how diversity in tech came about. Um, and we've always been looking at DNI from a holistic lens. Yeah. Not only as gender, but also accessibility, you know, all the different things we identify with. And that's been my passion from the beginning because, you know, I'm a woman of color. I'm a new immigrant to the U.S., the only one in my family to do it, Mm -hmm. Um, you know. So all of us have unique stories that just help us help shape us into who we are. And, you know, that's something that I love doing. We did that for, you know, almost two years. And now I think the time has come for us to take it to the next level to talk about humanity as a whole. And I love things that have a purpose. Yep. Uh, you know, work in itself is busy enough, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, work can be very tiring and exhausting. But I gain a lot of strength working on, you know, issues or things that can help us solve problems in the world and i think that's something that's a huge motivator for me and my source of energy yeah multi-level multi-faceted for Multi-level, sure yep yeah that's cool you know it's so funny i worked with you for such a long time i didn't know that origin story <laughs> really yeah no i didn't actually I a lot of people do but yeah i mean it's funny like i personally have have encounter all kinds of stories like when I first moved to the U.S. like I would have people say like oh like how come your English is so good you know things like that it's all based on bias and perception like most people don't even know that in Singapore we are bilingual like everyone speaks two languages you know and it's just assumption that when someone looks at you as a person of color they immediately assume you don't speak English fluently Mm -hmm. or things like that yeah. And I was in the PR team at that time. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> so it's been a huge learning journey. And, you know, I feel like there's so much opportunity and space right now yeah. that issues need to be addressed. Like, we can't just sweep it under the rug. Like, we need to give the community a voice and be real with each other so that change can happen. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. So, <laughs> so yeah. you're, you're a busy gal with a lot of demands. And how do you unplug? Where do you, where do you, how do you unplug? Yeah. I love um, hiking trips. So going out into the nature, just kind of unplugging from technology and, you know, a good spa day never hurts. I love (laughs) going to the spa and like sometimes I drag Anna with me. I'd be like, hey, we need to like seriously unplug and have a self-care day. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. What's the last place you went just for fun? Just for fun. Oh my gosh. That's a that's a good question because I tend to combine yeah. you know the work I do with my passion. Yep. So I don't know where did I go for fun? Well, I went to the Canadian Rockies. Yeah. My husband. Yeah, it was fun. We went to see um, Lake Louise, Banff. You know, just soak in all the nature. I think it's a beautiful time. That's um, awesome. Yeah, we also went up to Vancouver. It's really nice right now in the fall season. We don't get four seasons in Singapore, so that's something I really appreciate. Yeah. How long have you been in, in Seattle? Three and a half years. 
three and a half years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, it, I'm five. Yeah, right. You blink, and a lot of big changes for you. So that's awesome and exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yep. You mentioned husband. That's fun. Yeah, moved across the world. <laughs> had a brand new job with no PR background, and took on a PR job. So anything's possible <laughs> if you have the right attitude and sponsors and mindset. <laughs> I think absolutely. And so, will you talk a little bit about um, Ignite? Because that's been a big piece of what you've been working on as of late. And yeah. there's a giant program and. We would you tell our listeners a little bit about what's going on there too? Yeah, Ignite has been my life right now. It's 20 days away. So as you can tell, we are in full steam ahead mode for it. Um, so I am currently leading the diversity inclusion track. So it's kind of the last one I'm doing before I fully pivot over to humans of IT. We have a lot planned and a lot going on for this track. We have over 40 sessions. I think it's like 43 at last count. Wow. Um, including breakout sessions, theaters, unconferences. Um, you know, all the topics range the gamut from parent, parenting and tech or, you know, women IT pros or, you know, neurodiversity, like how, how is it like living with autism or, you know, with a diagnosis, right? Lorian Strand, one of our MVPs, is, is going to do a session on that as well, living with ADHD and, you know, supercharging your career. Oh. Um, so, you know, there's just a lot of topics and, you know, we just want to create an opportunity for everybody to be able to add it to their session schedule, no matter where they are, because... You have no excuse, right? There's five days. We have sessions going on every single day, <laughs> including daily and power lunches. Yeah. Um, on Monday, we have a CVP panel. It's called Future Proofing Against Bias in Tech. I highly recommend that one. Um, on Wednesday, we have Haven Gurma, who is Harvard Law School's first deaf-blind graduate. She's talking about how she has overcome adversity to become a disability rights lawyer. Wow. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. We're giving away a copy of her book to the first 400 attendees. So West 224 is our room, and all the DNI sessions will be on there. So make sure to mark it in your calendar. <laughs> um, and then we also have unconferences. So the unconferences are more interactive, hands-on format in a smaller, intimate setting. Um, and we really just want to get people to get together and share best practices. Like, how do you survive having a job and parenting, you know, full-time? Right. Um, so what are the mistakes you've made in your career? as women uh, in tech, right? Like, how do we get past it? How do we help support one another? So plenty of connection opportunities. Um, I always tell people that, you know, at conferences, a lot of sessions are live streamed and recorded, but the community part is something you can't get on demand. Right. You have to make time for it. So be sure to, you know, pace yourself at plenty of time for networking and meeting people because these are the friendships and the connections you'll take away with you long after the event is over. Yeah, I agree with that. That's uh, amazing and awesome advice. And I also saw that uh, the student ambassadors are back in full force. And there's, I think, two, I think, that were last year and that are coming back as well. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. two of them were from last year's batch. They will be student advisors to the incoming batch. And we've actually expanded our student ambassador program threefold. Wow. So we had like five last year. This year we have 15. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, yes, and they're from all the local universities in the Orlando area. So yep. University of Central Florida, University of Florida, and Valencia College. Um, we're really excited because this gives students a first-hand look at what the tech industry is really like, you know, beyond your textbooks. Yep. As you know, it's so different when you go out <laughs> to the industry. Yeah. And, you know, we're so excited because... A lot of the, the, the ones that we invited last year, they actually came back to Microsoft for their summer internships. Oh, wow. And yeah, so Rachel is one of them. Chant uh, Chantelle is our new ambassador this year. She was also a um, uh, summer intern this past summer. Milena is another one. She's going to be on the Friday panel. So, you know, I think we really want to make sure that, you know, they get a chance to see what it's like for themselves, right, yeah. before they graduate and get to see what working in tech is like and how connections can really help them, finding the right mentors, you know, people to support them. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of companies out there. Let's be honest, right? The demand for tech talent is huge. Yes. So what can we do to help give them, you know, a good setup so that, you know, they know we're here for them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the other one that we're really excited about, too, is the Tech Women program. So I'm not sure if you've heard about it from last year, Heather. Mm -mm. Tell me all so about it. We yes. are actually working with a nonprofit. It's uh, it's called Tech Women, mm -hmm. and they actually sponsor women from developing countries to come to the U.S. for, you know, internships, learning programs, and things like that. This year, we're sponsoring um, almost 20 tech women from all different countries, Lebanon. Oh, right, yeah. Visa, wow. mm -hmm. 
And they will be coming and fully engaging as attendees to see what is it like. We want to connect them with people who can then help amplify their profile. In fact, one of them uh, was here last year and she really wanted to be back this year. Mm. We've invited her to our Microsoft Ignite Tour Paris. Oh, cool. She's from Algeria, she also speaks French. Um, and we just want to give them that platform to share their story. She's an assistant professor in computer science, and, and outside of her day job, she does a lot of volunteering work for women in technology. Awesome. Um, and we also had a really happy story last year. One of uh, the tech women we brought over to Microsoft Ignite, she became a regional director. What? This past year. Simply because of the you know the people she got to meet, and yeah. they helped to raise her visibility because she was a CEO of an IoT company doing amazing stuff, but nobody knew her. Yeah. Nobody knew her outside of Algeria. So right. when she came to a big global conference, she met all these amazing MVPs who were like, oh, you should absolutely be on this program. And it just happened. That's so cool. Yeah, I think so. Like I, I interviewed all the um, um, most of the student ambassadors last year on a podcast. And I want to catch them again this year for sure. Especially with Elizabeth and Genevieve and saying, hey, you know, like what's happened in the last year since you did this, you know, so that's super yeah. super cool some of them are doing really amazing stuff like one of our student ambassadors actually built um prosthetic limbs for her father because there was nothing to market that could suit his needs wow so she just went on and built it like that's how amazing it is. <laughs> so i actually connected with her because i think her story is a pretty incredible cool one. yeah no i'd love that yeah i planned it and i think many of you already know this already but i, I will be a, compu a community reporter at ignite so i'm going to be running around and uh, probably <laughs> yeah, like but running, but catting around the uh, diversity and inclusion lounge for sure, because it's a passion of mine as well. And I've loved, I loved working with you on all of this uh, as oh, well. Oh, likewise. Yeah. Get your puppy shoes on. I know, right? <laughs> I know. I actually just bought a couple of pairs, so um, so that I'm ready to go. And what well, um, the pre day? Will you talk a little bit about the pre day? Yes. So the pre day is a full day program. Last year we started from noon. This year we're starting at eight a.m. Woo! <laughs> so okay. We Yes, we are, you know, having a full day of jam-packed sessions. Just, there's so much content we would love to showcase. So it's a full day from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then we have the evening reception. Awesome. So let me just kind of tell you what are some of the core content we'll be featuring. So one of them um, involves um, a speaker, Dina Pirot. She's um, the founder of iUrban Teens, a nonprofit that helps underrepresented communities gain access to technology, especially youth. Um, I met her at um, a women in tech event in Portland, and she invited me to speak at Starbucks. And it's kind of interesting how the full circle has come about. And yeah. I was like, your topic is great. And she's actually Julie going to talk about the intersection of race and gender. Wow, cool. And that's powerful because yep. a lot of people tend to think of these categories as linear. Like you're either a woman or someone of color, like that's it. But no one ever really talks about this, you know, it's an intersection. Yep. And what that means for people who cut across both those categories. Mm -hmm. People like right mm -hmm. um and she's gonna have an amazing panel that we've pulled together there was just a prep call this morning um and everyone's just gonna share their true story you know like real authentic stories about how what is it like being a person of color female or gender non-binary even mm -hmm. um and you know what is the environment that we need to create so that we're all included and have a voice yeah absolutely so that's gonna be the full morning part um and then we have donna sakar of course doing a neurodiversity as a superpower panel um a lot of um amazing panelists she's invited to kind of talk about neurodiversity as a whole and how that's not a disability but really a superpower if managers just know how to work with that right yep to bring out the best in these individuals and then we poured over to um another speaker kyla mitsunaga she's a ted talk speaker and also a published author wow. uh, we'll be giving away a copy of her book to every attendee as well um she talks about you know communication skills with versus at somebody Ooh. Yeah. To collaborate. And she did a session at Microsoft Ignite Tour Amsterdam last cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and she talked about the pursuit of happiness. Like, you know, this is something that's elusive. Her session was packed because I think in tech, especially, everyone's trying to look for happiness. Like, what is our meaning and purpose here? Yep. How do we use our skills for good? And that's just something that she'll be doing in her session. So, really looking forward to that. It's going to be great. That's cool. Wow. Uh, how, how close are, are people? Well, Ignite is sold out. 
Right. And I just thought about you can still add the pre day to your registry. I think we have a couple of seats left if people do want to join in. Um, it's not too late. Yeah. Just do it ASAP. And then for the evening reception, we have, you know, from last year, she's a violinist who also does DJing together. She, I don't know. It's, it's, it sounds amazing. She's <laughs> She was awesome. Yeah. She was, yeah, we invited her back. Um, oh, cool. We also have a Disney caricaturist who's going to draw your superhero alter ego. <laughs> That's not awesome. Even we hired the characters from Disney. So. That's fantastic. Why not? Yeah. Last year it was uh, a calligraphist, right? Yeah. That was, and you could give any quote and cool. and yeah, it was so. That was I still I have my I'm looking at it. It's on my bookshelf over there. I Ooh. love that. Yeah, so. we love that. But I think this year we want to do something different and just have yeah. people think about what would your alter ego be if you weren't afraid. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, I bet I'm I'm sure that there's going to be some lovely giveaways and fun stuff like that, too. Those are always pretty, pretty yummy from uh, uh, from what I from what we had last year. So Ooh, I have to tell you, this year's like top giveaway uh-huh. is going to be a custom Lego set called the Modern Inclusive Workplace. So what? I custom designed it. it. Took me three months. Oh, but my- hey, it's out. Yes. <laughs> um, and. We have limited sets that we'll give away. There's an interactive game at the Humans of IT Lounge. It's called the Humans of IT Race, kind of a play on the word human race. Uh-huh. Um, and it's an interactive um, AR, kind of VR game. And you would form a team of four, yep. go to that game lounge, and you have to race like with your arms. So that's inclusive of you know people who are in wheelchairs, they can participate as well. Um, the fir- the the Top five teams with the fastest timing per day will get this limited edition Lego set. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Ooh, I can't wait to see it. That is so Oh, you have to win it, awesome. Heather. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Your shoes on. I know. I'm like, yeah, really? I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll see if I get in there. I'm going to be running around a little bit. But, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's not, I, I mean, it just it keeps building, you know, which is so yeah. wonderful. And thank you for all your beautiful work that you've done on this uh, with the teams and, and in conjunction with the events teams. It's really cool to see. And it's really cool to see how the entire, all, all of Microsoft, you know, just from the global DNI perspective, from the IT pro community yeah. and everybody coming together to really put a lot of these issues, mental health, burnout, you know, tech, tech and, and intersectionality, all of these things out in the forefront for all of us to talk about together, you know, creating that belonging that we all really want, right? Yeah, we love it. I think, you know, it ignites like kind of like a one big party, you know, you think like yeah. everyone around the world coming together yep. um, and just really celebrating this amazing community. Like you're a part of community, Heather. Like I love the tech community just because there's so many passionate people doing amazing things. Yeah. And it's, you know, the one time in the year where we all get together yep. and just celebrate each other. Yeah, absolutely. It's and it's huge, you know, it's and and so much so much of it is also, you know, those who can't come, you know, there's somebody was saying, you know, don't have FOMO. And I was like, you know, there's probably some people who have what uh, JOMO, like the joy of missing out because they're going to get to watch in their bathrobes from the, right. you know, <laughs> and not have exactly. hurt, hurting feet. Um, but, you know, yeah, it is a big, wonderful event and uh, it's going to be awesome. So I also, you know, so um Growing up in Singapore, I wanted to track back to that for a second. And, you know, for you growing up there, um, how, how did how did you get like the like into like the decision for tech for you? Oh, you mean like when I graduated, how did I decide to join tech? Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting story. Like I was going to join a cosmetics company because I participated in a marketing challenge and they were like, yeah, you should join us. And I told my dad. My dad's a longtime IBM executive um, okay. way back when. He's now retired. Mm-hmm. But he was the one who told me, like, why why would you join a company and, you know, like, why would you join a company that doesn't directly work on tech? Because when you do work in tech, you get to influence every other industry out there. Yeah. And that just, like, really sunk in for me. And I felt like, wow, like, that's true. Like, yeah. I could be at the forefront and helping build solutions that will impact every organization no matter where you are. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say, you know, there's anything wrong with working in any specific industry, but I just personally love being in tech because we're at the forefront of cutting technology yep. and we get to help have a say in what, what gets built, you know, how do we use our solutions? How do we communicate that to people? Yeah. Um, and it's just been so rewarding cool. um, just for me. I feel like I'm learning something new every day. Mm-hmm. And the biggest draw for t- uh, in tech for me that I think will apply to most people is that no matter where you're on this journey, you can always join in because tech is always evolving. Yep. 
you're never too late to join tech. Yeah, agreed. I mean, if I can teach my mom how to use Instagram, anything can happen, you know? <laughs> right, or be like the tech support at that home, which everybody is, no matter what your role is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The phones and the printers and everything get shoved my way. I'm sure you'd, that's any of us in tech, yeah. for sure. But, I know, yeah. and I'll be like, I don't work in that area, but okay, <laughs> like, I'll try. I'm sure I can help you pair your Bluetooth yep. with your laptop. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. That's funny. Well, so my last question um, is always, you know, uh, what if, what, what's that spark or moment or person or, you know, uh, that really got you to be where you are today? If you can pinpoint one that you would share with our listeners. I think, you know, I wouldn't say there's one specific person. I think there's always been a group of people just throughout my life and career so mm-hmm. far that have really helped me. I think if I trace it way back when, like when I was in high school, I remember one of my teachers, the, the biggest thing he said was there are many routes to the same path. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's not one way to success. Like there's so many ways you can get there, right? And nobody has a fixed path. Like your life is always evolving and you just don't know what's going to happen. You just have to make the most of it and just be earnest and sincere when you live. Yep. Um, I feel like that's, that's something that I've always taken throughout my career when I think about, you know, what is the thing that I want to do? I want to do something with purpose, with meaning. I want to leave a good impact on society, right? We need to leave the world a better place than when we first found it. It's one of my personal mantras too. Um, but you know, like starting out at Microsoft, I joined Microsoft through the graduate program. So back when it was called the mock program, I think some people might be familiar. Mm -hmm. Um, I had an amazing manager back then who really believed in me. And when I said like, Hey, you know, I love Singapore, but I, been born and raised here I think I'm ready to go onto a global stage and do something like large like massive scale yeah he was so supportive like every time we had a business trip he would send me and be like hey go there go meet people go find the connections you need to make it work and like it did it paid off and you know when I came here you know doing a job that's really hard like I didn't know anybody when I first moved here you Mm -hmm. know I had to learn everything from scratch build a network build a community right um, you know, it's kind of ironic, like come on, coming to a place where I had no community and then building one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You DIY, Very DIY crazy. community. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like I, the number of people I knew in Seattle was like, I could count with one hand. Wow. Literally. Um, and you know, coming here and getting to meet so many people since I will say Twitter is a huge help. Yeah. Um, I wasn't even a big Twitter user way back when. Like, mm. it's not a big thing in Singapore. But yeah. apparently everyone in the U.S. here is huge on Twitter. Yep. <laughs> one time I asked my husband, like, why does everyone in the U.S. have, like, so many things to say? Yeah. <laughs> and they want to say it publicly. But I see I see value in it. I think there's a whole reason why. Because, you know, it's a platform, right? It's a, yep. it's a way to share your voice, your principles, and meet tons of people from there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, having managers are supportive and right now my manager, Jeff, shout out to Jeff. Yeah. He's probably going to listen to this because he <laughs> listens to all our content. <laughs> and he's um, awesome. You know, he, yep. Yeah. <laughs> he's been so supportive, you know, in terms of, you know, working through the repivoting and transition and really supporting what we need to do, right. To make this real and authentic for our community. I think this team, if anything, and you've worked with many of us, Heather, you know, yep. Our team loves the community. We love people and the work that we do, like we it's draining. I mean it's exhausting, but we get energy from it because we know the people who will benefit from it and that's what we're here for. We're here for all of you. Yeah. No, that's uh yeah. I mean all of you and you you're so effervescent, you know, and just so passionate. Oh. And <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And everybody who works on that team is that way as well. And I you know, I'm not going to speak for the entire community, but I'm going to say thank. But I'm going to say thank you because when when we all talk about it, that's what we talk about is the passion and the goodness and yeah. We I mean, it's about helping each other and and trying to figure out stuff together. And I think we do, we all do that really well. And you all lead so well and listen too. You know, um, and that's oh, a big part of it. You. you know. Yeah team effort and you know I think there's just so much we can learn from each other yep I would say maybe connecting people is one of my superpowers yeah. I should write that down somewhere <laughs> <laughs> one of your superpower right everybody has superpowers yeah definitely I yeah I think you know for me connecting is one of them for sure and and just mm-hmm. sort of being able to sort of understand people fairly quickly you know um, I think that's my uh, background in theater you're a good listener yeah, I try, you know, I, that was something I, I, I work on deep listening, you know, sometimes you need to just be quiet, you know, and take it in. <laughs> yeah, actually take it in, not just kind of letting it 
it just swooshed by you. Yep. I think the huge skill that's getting lost today, right? Everyone's like bombarded with information yeah. all the time. Yep. Um, but, you know, taking time to really process what people are saying and like internalize it and come up with a thoughtful response, that's a huge like humans of IT skill. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. We're going to have to get more buttons. So, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. I have all buttons out. Like I'm telling everybody no more buttons because we ordered like forty thousand buttons the last cycle. Oh my goodness. I have, I have had enough of buttons. But yeah. we have made it digital. So we partnered with oh, an yeah. artist. If you go to aka.ms slash diversity superpower, yeah. you can have your own AR filter with the button wall. Oh, so that, it's eternal. Right. That's <laughs> right. That's awesome. I'm looking at the ones on my refrigerator right now, so I have mine up for sure. So that was a cool, cool thing last year. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Well, you are, like I said, an effervescent force of nature, and I love working with you, and I love talking to you. So I really, Shauna, I appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing all of that of what's coming on uh, for Ignite and uh, and humans of IT. Uh, it's so exciting. So thank you so much for coming on thank today. Thank you. We'll see you in Orlando. Yes, I will see you soon with bells on, as they say. So thanks so much. Better. Talk soon. <laughs> All right. You're welcome. Folks, that has been another episode of the Mavens Do It Better podcast. And here's to a big, beautiful day on this blue spinning sphere. Thanks. The original music on this podcast was created by Jesse Case.